yeah, getting right into this thing. How would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, everything that we see on your YouTube channel and everything that's involved in your art. What is this all about? <laughs> that's the that's quite a question right from the get-go. Um I hardly ever know how to answer what I do when people ask me out in the world. I kind of just do whatever I think is fun and that keeps changing. What I want to do currently is teach people how to get into alignment using their emotions to connect with the universe personally. And somehow, I'm not how sure yet, eventually down the road, I'd like to connect that with art and creativity. So what I do <laughs> is I paint is one of the things I do. I dance. I am stepping into becoming a spiritual teacher as a career. That's a new route for me. And um, my... My job life is a very strange history, so I won't go into that unless you ask me specifically, but who knows what I do. It depends on the month or the year, really. <laughs> depends on the day. I feel you. Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's go down the route of alignment. Mm -hmm. How would you describe what that is or maybe what exactly we are aligning to? Mm-hmm. Um, that is kind of the feeling you get when you're most in the place of being connected to your soul over any expectations or any fears or anything else. So getting all the fears out of the way and trying to get into what you honestly desire without trying to ju put judgments on what that might be. That's at least that's how I get most quickly into the place of alignment and when I'm there, it just feels like things are flowing easily. And the feeling of it is really how you would describe it more than how to get there. You know when you're there because it kind of feels like you're the star of your own movie. It feels like the puzzle pieces fit and everything is just flowing nicely and it feels great. So yes. you can't mistake it when you're there, but when you're out of it, it's like, how do I get back to that? Yeah, I get that. There is a emotional resonance to it that goes beyond logic sort of goes beyond rationale and yeah mm -hmm. it just feels good 100 feels good <laughs> yeah now how do you say we get aligned what does the alignment process look like that um that's what i would say the process of forgiveness or non-attachment or non-judgment which are all ultimately the same thing is to accomplish because the only reason anyone would ever be out of alignment, since alignment is just the natural state, is if they've put a lot of fears in the way or a lot of judgments. So you can't really see clearly or understand the messages clearly that you're getting because of the the cloudy layers of fear. Yeah. So for me, it's been a lot of both specifically deciding what I want to forgive and stop judging and letting go of those things as a process and also just letting the natural process take its place so that the universe can help me clear those out and I can see what my desires are or be honest about them. And sometimes, or a lot of the time, it's going to involve uncomfortable growth because we're always expanding and I can tell my soul is always wanting bigger and bigger things. And so alignment doesn't mean one thing perpetually, like you do this and you're there because as soon as you're there, you've expanded and you're going to want something new. So it's about going forward despite your fears sometimes. And there's it's sometimes tricky to tell whether a fear or some negative feeling means don't go this way or whether it means right beyond this is something great if you go that way. But it takes a little try trial and error, but yeah. getting past those fears to the desires you have for your own life, for me specifically, especially was how I was able to get into alignment and how I can train myself back if I feel like I'm falling out of it. Mm. But you're saying whatever, which way life decides to take us, our desires decide to take us day by day, as we said, right? It's different day by day. It's intuitive. No matter what comes up 
in the situation or the circumstances of our life, whatever they may be, it's still that same emotional resonance, right? It's still that same intuitive feeling of goodness, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So once you practice, honestly, practice trusting that feeling, you kind of have to prove it to yourself for quite a while to know that when you go in the direction of that feeling, something good happens, even if something scary happens first, or you have to get past the scary thing. Yeah. But once you trust that feeling, you can just start going towards it without the fear of something bad happening if you go that way. Yeah. And that's a process. <laughs> Definitely a process. Would you say this is what people dub the higher self? Um, That's what I consider myself talking to or inner being or universe in yeah that that's one thing it's hard to tell when everything is all one i don't think it matters if you call it your higher self or god or the universe or whatever exactly. it's it feels good i know what that feeling is and whatever you want to call it is probably okay mm -hmm. the truth is one and the wise call it by many names yes <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> so Oh, man. What was I going to say? Damn, I was going to ask something. It went right out the window. It happens. Um, <laughs> I, okay, yeah, I, I remember now. What was, What exactly do we do, would you say, in a general sense, to at least tap in with that knowing, that internal intuitive wisdom? Would you say it's through meditative practices? You know, psychotherapy, hypnosis, yoga, like, do you have certain things that you know how to align yourself with? Yeah. Um, there's a couple parts to that. I would say, first of all, it's always happening. Everyone is always constantly 100% of the time getting information from that source, yeah. because that's where everything comes from. And there's no other place for it to come from. The only problem is the layers of fear in the way that make the the signals really cloudy. Mm -hmm. And so I've tried so many things to during my spiritual awakening, like just putzing around and throwing darts, trying to get into alignment and see what worked. And if I just had to make a, like a prescription of two things, it would be daily meditation and a daily bullet point gratitude journal at the end of the day, where you just write down, anything interesting or fun or funny that happened to you or that you thought about or that you did for someone else, anything at all. And you start realizing it's not just a gratitude practice. It's these are the gifts the universe is giving you. And these are yeah. your communications that you're receiving that you just overlooked. And so when you start to realize that it's more than being grateful, it's this is your communication with the universe. Yeah. And these are their responses to your questions and requests, then it starts to make a lot more sense and you start to see what's working for you and what's not more clearly. Yeah. That's quite powerful. But also dance and art and a lot of other things, but <laughs> yeah. Those are the ones I'd tell everyone to do if I could. Mm. So on the note of gratitude, I like that. It's like a reminder. Not only are you eliciting this positive emotion of gratitude but you're saying when you write it down you're almost it's almost serving you as a reminder that the universe is actually on your side yeah yeah i can't like tell that. you how many times i've done that and i've forgotten because so many wonderful things have happened throughout the day but then i i start and i just can't stop and i'm astonished about how much that i've asked for has actually mm. come in <clears throat> and then yeah. just like with anything, the more you think about it, the easier it is to start drawing that emotion to you. So if you just start on the gratitude train, it just keeps coming. Mm -hmm. So it's a good thing to just train yourself to do. Truly. I'm pretty sure we've all heard that before. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's so, kind of a it's cliche. It's so easy and so simple, but you just actually have to do it. <laughs> yeah, right. For a long time, for years, forever, just forever. <laughs> Yeah, forever. <laughs> Brush your teeth and do your gratitudes. <laughs> <laughs> Sound advice. Yeah. <laughs> it's all perspective, right? It's all perspective. It really is. Yep. And then with it that is. sense of gratitude, I feel brings one more reason to be 
in a sense of gratitude, you know? It's like that good energy brings more reasons to have good energy. The blessings bring blessings. The love brings love. It's like it puts you in this positive spiral that puts you in a perpetual positive spiral. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly what it does. It just attracts more of what you're focusing on. Yeah. You keep that's... getting the emotion you're putting out. And if you're putting out gratitude, you'll get more things to be grateful for. It's really, really that's simple. simple. It's that simple. And it works the other way, too. <laughs> it's that simple. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. All the people focusing on things like politics or fear or war. And even the YouTube algorithms where people say they keep getting worse and worse political news, it's because you keep focusing on that and it keeps drawing more to you and just you have to decide to focus on gratitude instead. It's a decision and an action yeah. you can take. Yeah. It's a pretty simple one. Yeah, it's intriguing. The YouTube algorithm is almost like a symbol of our manifestation. It almost mm -hmm. is like a physical manifestation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's it's such a mirror of how that works. It's incredible. Yeah, it almost feeds into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I hear people's, I hear of people's algorithms, and I'm like, what? Huh? Yeah, it's so foreign. Yeah. Why to is me. yours giving you that? Yeah. yeah. Why are you getting murder and just yeah debauchery? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just click on funny videos, and you'll keep getting those. Yeah. Exactly. Get the cat videos. Or the Get conscious perspective. Videos. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> That's all you need in life. Yeah, it makes exactly. a lot of sense. So what do you see on that note, the role of technology being as time goes on with the advent of AI and us getting more and more enamored with this technology and maybe it literally being part of our body in the future? What do you see the role of it being as time goes on? You know, does it um, does it have a place in this alignment process? I think it definitely could for everything. I'm sure you know this. Every tool you can use out of alignment or you can yeah. use it in alignment. So exactly. as long as you're in alignment, you can use a tool to your benefit. And um, one thing I did when chat GPT came out was I tried to write, use it to write poems. It's like, write me a poem about... Um, this future I want to see for myself. So I would give it visual inputs and specific things I wanted in my future. And it would write me little poems and stories so I could picture myself in that setting and have the emotions come up. That's cool. And yeah, some of them were good. Some were, some were okay, yeah. but it'll like, there's so many cool things you could do with it. And even what people think the worst case scenario is with AI that it, takes over all the jobs and we have nothing left to do that kind of doesn't sound so bad because <laughs> if we have nothing left to do we'll just have to do whatever's fun <laughs> so exactly that's the good I news think, yeah yeah so we don't <laughs> work anymore that's okay <laughs> i don't know can you truly but imagine though, what that would be like would be, i mean not what not hypothetically that's actually what's happening <laughs> yeah well I mean, if it's happening, then it's supposed to happen and it's for the best. It's to all yeah. of our benefit. We just have to see how and have to, if we want to use that, we can figure out how to use it to our benefit. It's definitely possible for anyone who wants to. Amen. I think that yeah. will be the biggest thing of it is us not having to work because it work is the majority of our lives. It's the majority of what we sink time into. And a lot of our mm -hmm. work, let's be honest, is not anything that we actually want to do. It's not fulfilling exactly. our heart's desires. So exactly. when we don't have that, yes, people may think they lack a purpose because a lot of people attach purpose to their work. But I think it's a false sense mm -hmm. of purpose, to be honest. I mean, it's hard to generalize. Some people actually yeah. do have find purpose in their job. But yeah. in a general sense, I think for most of us, we don't find purpose in our job. Um, it may be like, it may be like a fake purpose, like I said, though. It might be like you think you have purpose, but is it truly like a divine purpose? I don't know. I'm not judging, but most likely not. And that's my personal experience from the amount of jobs that I've had where I'm like, this is a, yeah. a waste of my time. I do not feel like I'm doing anything purposeful. So when there is simply no um, thing to place a false purpose on with any kind of job, when you literally don't have anything to do... <laughs> You're going to have to find some kind of purpose, you know, there, I think naturally we're yeah. inclined to purpose, whether it's false or not. So I think 
when we have nothing to do, we're going to be inclined to the spiritual path per se to find uh, what really it means to have purpose in the human condition outside of a job. And yeah, that's the good news. I think uh, honestly, it's going to allow people to really figure out who and what they are and hopefully allow creative pursuits and more joyful uh, energy overall in people's lives just because you don't have to be a slave ultimately, you know? Um, but yeah, I think that's the future future. I don't think that's any time like soon within the five, 10 yeah, years. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's in a rush. No, no, I don't. Maybe we'll be old by the time that reality comes to fruition. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll see it. If not, it'll be next generation. We'll have to worry about that. But I do foresee that. And I do foresee it being actually a good thing. The people that are fear it, I think they just yeah. have a false understanding of of a lot of things. I don't know. It's hard. I don't really want to go down that route too much. But it's just a false understanding of what AI is really going to do for us. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From a spiritual perspective. Yeah. From a spiritual perspective, everything makes much more sense everything is for our good exactly so if someone's fearing that then they're not quite seeing it from the correct perspective yet which is fine everyone's got in their own time yeah but like you said if it takes all the jobs away and people are forced to actually see what brings them fulfillment that's the looking into your own desires and that's how you're going to get into alignment so mm -hmm. People being in jobs they don't like is blocking them from being in alignment and yeah. blocking themselves from hearing the universe and having that personal connection. So yeah. if we play AI out, maybe it could help with that. I think so. I think so. Maybe we're a little idealistic in that sense, but I think it's realistic as well. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned uh, when you start to realize that the universe... Um, I forget exactly what you said, but that everything is happening for you in the universe. That's part of the perspective shift. And mm -hmm. that may seem like another corny cliche thing that we've all heard before, but that actually is the truth. The universe is you, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and you are conspiring for your own good. You know, the greater self is, is, is aspiring for the self of Gary, Jacqueline, the listener, their own good. It's aspiring for the embodiment of your best expression of the character of Gary or Jacqueline or the listener, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Truly, truly. It's um, mm -hmm. it's really a miracle when one finds that out. And it, it's not really just yeah. like a corny cliche. When you actually internalize that, that comes along with that good feeling, that gratitude that you spoke of before, that natural mm -hmm. sense of intuitive joy. That is part of it, is feeling that, wow, yeah, yeah this go. is together yeah yeah it's like this is all this is there's like a plan here in a way that's like this is all conspiring for my own good hallelujah for me. yeah yeah that was actually uh, something i had to actively cement as a belief that was something i i saw i believed it but there were parts of me that still weren't quite there or weren't yeah. quite trusting so i worked on, on believing that until it became a core belief and now it's very easy to switch to gratitude because i can just decide to see how something that doesn't immediately seem good could be working for me mm. and mm -hmm. it helps a lot mm -hmm. seriously it's a miracle yep <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get aligned to this wavelength in the first place where did this all come from for you because i think i saw in one of your videos maybe it was two years ago or mm -hmm. four years ago five years ago i don't even know what it was to be yeah. honest but <laughs> relatively recently you've gotten on this wavelength mm -hmm. right so how mm -hmm. why where, where where did this all yeah. come from for you um i was not spiritual well spiritual before i was closer to an atheist i was an atheist most of my life mm -hmm. um a couple of years ago I just decided it was time to break out of some of my patterns. And the best I knew was that in some way, those were being reflected to me in my external world based on what my mindset was. So I wanted to go in and do my shadow work. And I made a really, really firm commitment to doing that. And there was a lot of confidence going in that universe send me whatever shadow work I need to do and whatever fear I need to overcome. I don't care how many there are, how hard it is. I will knock them all out of the park. Do it. I'm ready. 
and I didn't actually know if that would work because mm -hmm. I didn't know if asking the universe actually did anything, but it did. Yeah. Um, so I moved to a new place in Portland, Oregon, where I'm not there now, but I, I tried to make friends because I like friends who doesn't. And I went to four separate events that were supposed to be group events. And at four times in a row, I was the only person who showed up and that felt like a universe smack in the face. You're not supposed to be going external. Now you're supposed to be going internal. Mm -hmm. So I started really intensely meditating and trying to do my shadow work and what came up. And I only realized this well after I wouldn't even call it shadow work. I would call it light work because I realized I'd been suppressing love for another person, romantic love, because I thought following it through would be impossible. So there was no point even allowing myself to feel it. But not allowing yourself to feel love is literally what keeps you out of alignment. So I had yeah. to learn how to just let that up, even if the pain of not being with that person came up with it and work through the pain and keep only the love and just keep jettisoning all the fears and then while that was going on, that particular love, I don't believe in twin flames, but if you look up twin flame awakenings, it has a lot of the components of that and the intensity of it. And that person's soul, the higher self was one of the first connections I had that felt otherworldly and rocketed me into this whole spiritual thing where I just knew for a fact all this stuff existed. And it was just very easy to refocus on the feeling of perfect love and non-judgment um, because if anything else would come up to make me feel bad, I saw that I had the choice. Well, either I'll feel bad about this stupid judgment I have, or I can forget about it and just refocus on something I love. And it really quickly trained me to just always focus on love and never focus on judgment or fear or anything stupid. Yeah. And I came to a course in miracles a couple months after that. I actually asked the universe for its rule book and that's what it sent me in oh, response. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I started being able to receive downloads while I was reading that and a little before, and that was an incredible part of the journey. And yeah. that's how this all started. I went from like near zero, near atheist to, Oh, apparently I'm talking to universe and this <laughs> seems a little crazy, but I guess it's happening. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. When in doubt, focus on love. Exactly. <laughs> it's interesting how you started off almost with a prayer, right? Mm -hmm. You're like, come yeah. on, something. If anything, it doesn't even have to be God, the universe, which actually is God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> please Whatever's help me. There. Yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just help me, please. So, and your prayer was answered. Yeah, I feel that. I like yeah. to say atheists are like halfway there. They're almost oh, yeah. there, almost to really yeah. what God is or isn't. You don't even have to say God, you know, but yeah, atheists. It doesn't matter. Yeah, doesn't exactly. Matter. As long as the one isn't caught in dogma, you know, it's, yeah. that's a giant, giant Yeah, that starts getting tricky. There are religious people who are a lot further away than atheists are because yep. there are some wonderful atheists that have all the spiritual qualities you need, self-love yeah. and love of others and fun, and they don't even need to believe in God. It's all working for them. It's exactly. almost irrelevant. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So would you say now, if someone asked you on a podcast, do you believe in God? <laughs> would you say yes? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. And I also am God. And also, so are you. We all are that. There it is. It'd be hard not to believe in myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's That's the big difference between believing in God that the church wants you to believe in and actually yeah. have in the realization is realizing that, oh, you're a part of it There's as well. There's no separation. Yeah. <laughs> That's the big aha moment. Yeah. Oh, wait, it's not some external entity that I have to beg for presence. It's me <laughs> deciding to love myself and others. Amen. Yeah. It's me deciding to love myself and others. I never heard it put like that. That's good. Never said it like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a stream of consciousness here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, man. Is um is I feel as though us in the humanly drama 
you know, in our human futility, embodying a loving instrument of this other force that isn't really another force, but this other like will, this other guidance, this other wavelength is being able to embody a loving spirit despite the suffering and despite the darkness to shine mm -hmm. a little light despite the darkness, you know, and that's what it means to be godly. And it's not like grandiose. Yeah. It's not lofty. Like you become God, no. but it's not, it's not like that. No, nah, it's not like that at all. It's, um, it's hard to explain. It's, very and you, simple. it's so hard to explain. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, very simple. Yep. Like you said, man, yeah. mm, very simple. <laughs> yeah. It just all sounds kind of like platitudes and, and cliches, but <laughs> you know how many it's cliches I say on this podcast? It's kind of <laughs> sickening. But you have to, man. You have to kind of go cliche if you really want to talk about this capital T truth, which is a cliche in itself, mm -hmm. just saying the truth. Yeah. But it is. Um, Yeah, we're part of it. That's the thing. I think when one is caught in fear, as you said, we create these illusions of separation, that you're not good enough, that mm -hmm. you don't deserve it. But you always oh, yeah. deserve it and you're always good enough. Exactly. All right. Powerful yeah. stuff. I I had a lot of dreams that were bigger than what I thought was allowable. Mm -hmm. And that was part of the am I am I even allowed to dream this big? Am I like <laughs> worthy of having dreams that are these big? And it took a lot of letting go work to clear out the judgments of yeah, you're allowed to dream that big and you're allowed to get there. And we kind of stop ourselves at the, just, we can go so much farther than we let ourselves based on our own judgments of what's appropriate or possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, it's a good talk. <laughs> All I can say is That's... amen to that. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you feel once we are aligned to this said uh, godly energy, the higher self, that there is a sort of archetype in how we express ourselves? As in, do you feel like once we all kind of get aligned, we become servants to this energy? Do we all devote ourselves? To God, which is ourselves and everyone else. And then in that devotion, we find a sense of servitude, cooperation, just an embodiment of love. Like I said, like, is there a way that we can explain in a general sense what it really means to become our own Buddha? You know what I'm getting at? Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I specifically want to change the conversation around that in particular, because I have heard it expressed that way. And to someone who hasn't experienced it, I think maybe that doesn't sound great to be expecting that suddenly you're going to have to serve God. Uh -huh. What really feels like is happening. It feels like you're having this explosion of creativity yeah. and that you're at the cap at the helm of the ship directing where the ship goes and the universe is like the wind in your sails. So you're the captain of it. And it's more like it's serving you honestly, but because you're in cooperation, it's also serving everyone else because we're all one. And when you're in alignment with that one truth, what you're bringing forward is going to benefit other people naturally and automatically. Yeah. And so you couldn't possibly only serve yourself or only serve others when you're in alignment, you're doing both at the same time. So your job really is to listen to your own desires, point in that direction. And usually it will involve helping people. Most people want to help other people, but it'll happen naturally either way. And then you just let the universe, let its wind take you there. Mm -hmm. But you're always in control of the direction you want to go. Nothing is going to be forced upon you or suggested yeah. upon you that isn't something you want. Mm -hmm. It's just that using our free will we find a little less suffering and a little more flow in serving others though. Would you say that? Like there is a, when we do serve ourselves, yeah. which serves others, it's a little bit uh, more yeah. effortless, a little easier. 
it becomes really, really natural to want to make other people happy. Yeah. But also not at you, not at your expense. So I've yeah, simultaneously exactly. become much more helpful and kind to others while also having much stronger boundaries around my own needs. They happen yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This wavelength we're talking about now is a win win. It really is. It's a win win. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Exactly that. Yeah, it's quite beautiful. For me, it comes from the understanding that essentially, like you said, we're all God in drag, as Ram Das would say. <laughs> yeah, <that's good. laughs> I'm you, you're me. I'm the listener. I'm everything. So how can I not at least try to give back a little bit here? You know, and actually it's without trying. I'm kind of phrase mm -hmm. that in the wrong way it actually is effortless yeah so like it just that effortlessness just shines through because i understand that this person is just another appendage of what i am essentially so i even if it's just like you know tipping the homeless guy well not tipping the homeless guy but giving the homeless guy <laughs> five dollars tipping the barista saying hi to somebody, holding the door for somebody, even if it's just like something small like that, how can I not, you know, how can I not yeah. try to ease somebody else's suffering that isn't really somebody else? It's just, it's just like, it's intuitive. It's touching upon that intuitive guidance that we talked about before. And um, yeah, it's natural, I think is what you said. It's very, very natural. Yeah, we don't have to think about it. Yeah. And then also what most people want deep down is just well, what everybody wants, whether or not they know it, is to just be in alignment with their own higher yeah. self and to feel that for themselves. So one of the nicest things about being in it yourself is that you can just demonstrate that it's okay to be yourself. And then that naturally will resonate with other people and make them more comfortable being themselves. And yep. Yep. if you do literally nothing else for anyone but demonstrate that it's okay to be who you want to be. That's golden. Yeah, it's golden. Love brings love. Seriously, it's like, it's contagious. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's good stuff. It is. <laughs> it's a fun talk. Definitely fun. I had another thought. It went just straight out. Like I have these things and that. then, I don't know. That happens to me too. It wasn't meant to be, I guess. I'll come back if it's important. Yeah, exactly. Damn. Oh, let's see, where do we go from here? I don't even know. Might have to take a quick intermission on this one. Okay, no. <laughs> Might have That's to. Fine. It's the joy no of not rush. being alive. No rush. Um, let's see. I don't know oh. why. I just like I have nothing to say. That's all right. <laughs> this is like never happened to me. I'm just like, okay, just well, chill. I feel like we said it all. Just, it's all about I think love we and we serve the others. entire world. What'd you say? I think we solved the world. That's it. Yeah, we solved it. That's it. We solved it in 20 it's minutes. All good. Oh, you know what? That actually made me remember what I was going to say. Can you imagine what the world would be like? And actually, I think will be like. It might be in the future, future, future. If we're all aligned to our higher self and we actually all are aligned but like we we remember that we are aligned and we are constantly yep. in remembrance we just we just know right we just we just know yep. there's no distortion what would that look like that's truly like utopia that's truly heaven like yeah right can you it's like an alien world i've tried to i've tried to i honestly feel like there's a book that wants to explode out of me in the last month that uh -huh. I've just tried to imagine what it would be like if we were all just fully aligned and knowing that there was nothing trying to harm us, that nobody was trying to harm each other. We were all just hearing the universe. And visually, the how I've been able to explain this to myself is like geese flying or fish swimming when all oh. the fish in a school turn at the same time. It doesn't mean they're all literally having the same path because they're all still swimming their own path, but they're all getting instructions that work perfectly with each, with each other. So it would be billions of humans doing their own thing, but in perfect concert with each other yeah. in a creative way. And 
who knows what that would be like. Who knows? It would wouldn't be amazing. look like, yeah, it would be, Wouldn't look like this. definitely wouldn't look like this. No, I don't think we would even be able to describe it because the way that we No. would try to describe it is from our mindset. you know, Mhm. our framework of this world and the way that we think in this world, Yeah. we probably could touch upon certain archetypes and certain ways that it would come about, sort of like how science fiction has done for our time period. You know, there's like um, in Star Trek and Star Wars Yeah, exactly. and Dune, there's like some things that are in there that are in our world that not, might not be 100% accurate, but they're, you know, they're kind of like hidden in there, hidden gems. We could probably do that to try to explain what this future world would be like, but we'd probably be totally off at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. Interesting thought, though. I like that. That's a Yeah, cool idea. I would love to read books about that. I hope a lot of people start writing books about what that would be like. I would read all of them. Yeah, like a realistic science fiction book without the war, because <laughs> that's the thing. There's always mm a war. -hmm. There's Yeah, it, always it wouldn't. conflict. But if this It was realistic, was. It wouldn't happen like that. Yeah, <laughs> there wouldn't be war. right? Maybe that's just what we like to read about, though. Like, that's just something ingrained in our That's being. what I'm trying to think about is how do I write a book without <laughs> conflict? no one <laughs> would read it. would it be interesting? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's interesting. Without conflict, it's almost like there's a message in there. It's almost like the conflict Yeah. is a part of the journey here. The conflict brings resolution, you know, harmony through conflict. Like there's something very pivotal about conflict for some reason in this experience. Like will we ever have 100% harmony without conflict? Hopefully, maybe. I think we we got to. Yeah. There is a book I read. I just want to give a shout out to this one. I think it's The Monk and the Robot, which is a fairly new one. And it's like a really soft, gentle sci-fi that doesn't have much conflict, except this person going through and learning how to be himself. And I like that. more like that would be good. Yeah. He befriends a robot in a post- Hosts like industrial world and they release the robots and nothing bad really happens, but it, it still captured me the whole time. I think it's a bestseller. It sounds pretty cool. Yeah. So it can work. Yeah. That's what's going to happen, though, too, is we're going to have a lot of friends that are not actual human beings. We're going to have uh, artificial Interesting. friends, right? That might be true. Hmm. Interesting. Definitely. Definitely. People are going to, they're already doing that now with character.ai.com. Character.ai, I think it's called. You just go on there and you speak to these characters. And a lot of people I know are um, forming relationships with them. Um, it sounds crazy, but I actually just bought myself a Tamagotchi, which um, is a silly little 90s throwback. Oh, wow. And I kind of care about that little 8-bit digital guy. <laughs> so does that count as a relationship <laughs> with AI? I don't know. I think Not really so. artificial intelligence, though. <laughs> I think it's a rudimentary relationship, but just that's proof right there. If you can have a relationship and caring for that, you can definitely have something that um, you actually communicate with. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. That's the thing, too, We is shall. this future, this utopia that we speak of, will inevitably have artificial intelligence with it. You can't, if you're going to write a story, Yeah. you're Oh, going that's to a have good point. to put artificial intelligence in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a Interesting. huge part of it. Didn't even think of that. Yeah. Okay. Right? It would have, Weave like, that in. if you want to make it realistic, it's not, it's not going away anytime soon. That's for sure. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Ultimately, that's all I can say is I don't know. And we shall see. I also don't know. <laughs> I don't think anyone really knows, but I do have a good feeling <laughs> that it is on our side, despite mm -hmm. what popular paradigm is Oh, of yeah. it. You know, No, it definitely is. Everything. Everything everything. is really working for us. Absolutely, a hundred percent of the time, I'm as backwards as anything seems. That part's true. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> That poll, I feel, is a poll for us to express our creative pursuits to actually 
bring about this world into fruition, the kingdom of heaven, as they say in a biblical sense. I really do believe that's what we are, is a human being is like the builder of this kingdom Mm -hmm. of heaven. Yeah. And maybe Yeah, it that is... that was a Go ahead, sorry. We got a little no. delay here. <laughs> that was kind of a confusing part of flip flopping around and trying to figure out how much of this spiritual work is just thinking yourself into it and how much is acting in the world. And I really went from the masculine, like get everything done when you have an idea, go do it. to when I had my awakening right into the feminine, I'm just going to sit here and think about it and wait for it to happen. And it took a while of like wildly swinging back and forth to realize you need both. You need to Oh, yeah. dream it into a, like dream it up first and then you have to go act on it. But, but you have to have both pretty much every day. You need the quiet time and you need the active time and Yin and yang. we have to, yeah. That's the balance. We just need both. <laughs> you need both. Exactly. And with both, with the sense of quiet time, <laughs> makes the active time even better. And then exactly. with... A fulfilling act of time, it makes the quiet time even more worth it. It does. Yep. Seriously, that's the balance. Yeah. That's the balance. That is the balance. You <laughs> got it. <laughs> Hold cool. on, I got a quote in my phone from Alan Watts that kind of touches upon that. I think it does, actually. A perpetual, uncalculated life in the present. We've always been living it. We just convince ourselves we're not. Yeah, I like that. Right? That's kind of what you get from from the balance. This is a perpetual, uncalculated life Yeah. in the Yeah, present. and that's the thing about having the the empty space and the quiet time is that you can try to act. You can act, 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 but half the stuff that happens to you is going to be totally unpredictable. Oh, So yeah. you're going to... If you just try to act without the quiet time, you're going to be acting in the wrong direction because you're going to be going over here down your path and the universe is going to try and send you like really helpful presence in another way. And you're just going to be like bounding forward and ignoring them. So it's going to be hard to get anywhere without that, like those boosters packs that are sent your way that you can only hear in the quiet time. Yeah, we need quiet time to be still and know. Seriously. I really do think it is that simple, though. If I were to recommend anything, any one practice, it's just the disconnect from all the goings on, the craziness. Find a Yep. little quiet time. And it doesn't have to be that much time, honestly, No. especially in the beginning. Five, ten minutes a day just to tap in. Let's do 10 minutes a day. Yeah. That's great. The thing is, and I'm speaking from personal experience, and what I witness in others is most people don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. Zero Yeah. quiet time. It's always stimulation. Yeah. It's always go, go, go. Got to do something. Yeah. Right? My brain would explode. <laughs> I think Even that's... when things are going well, which Yeah. right now it does feel like I'm being sent so many gifts and so many things are going well that I just want to engage in all of them. And I actually got off track with meditating and there was just too much going on. It was all good, but it it was restless. Yeah. And so when I meditated after that happening, it just releases everything and it becomes so much clearer. So it doesn't matter if things are going poorly or going well, you definitely need the quiet time. Seriously. Yeah. I think it's number one. Number <laughs> one. it's Yep. number one. <laughs> Yeah. Once you start making that your top priority, once you start making your alignment, your top priority and actually committing to meditating every day, like that's how you put yourself first. Yeah. And once you commit to that, like all the good stuff is inevitable. It's just, <laughs> it's so easy. You just have to do it. it's easy, but a lot of people <laughs> are scared of themselves, unfortunately. yeah. You Yeah. know, I saw a street interview, quick video. I think it was like 
some guy asking what's the scariest thing you can imagine and a lot of people said or one person said um, being alone with my own thoughts is there anything scarier than being alone with your own thoughts nope no no <laughs> Bears and rapists and um, and people with uh, artillery weapons. I can understand that. I get it. It's false fear. It's an illusion. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think that a lot of people feel that. Like they just don't. They don't want to be by themselves. We could say it. We could, you know, go back and forth and say how important it is, and you should, probably should. But you don't know until you do it, and it's scary until you do it. Like it's this like. Yeah. I don't know. You know, it's like it doesn't it is. feel right to just sit down and literally do nothing. <laughs> oh, it's going to feel really strange at first. Yeah. You're going to feel like you should be doing literally anything else, probably. Yeah. It's, a, it's false, though. It's all just an illusion. That's what the ego wants to tell you. You got to go do something. Don't you want to go on TikTok? Do you want to see this movie? Don't you want to do this? Come on. Open that box of crackers, man. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Just one cracker. It's going to taste good. <laughs> Seriously. Mm -hmm. Endless stimulation. That's what our world is yeah. right now. Endless. Endless stimulation. Very distracting. It's very distracting. Endless distraction. And the only thing that matters, which is <laughs> yourself. <laughs> which is yourself, is which is figuring out what you really are. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's like we're okay with not knowing who and we things are. things get so much easier when you do that. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's just like bridging that gap of actually doing it. Well, firstly, like believing it, believing in yourself, and then following through with it, which I think you mentioned before. You sort of had to surrender, right? You sort of, you put out that quote prayer to the universe. And you surrendered to whatever comes yeah. forth. I think that is needed in order to follow this path. You know, a sort of breaking point, something that breaks you out of the routine, the rituals mm -hmm. of the ego into this actual pursuit, if you want to call it a pursuit, this journey to really what you are. And um, I say it comes from actually a sense of suffering. You know, a sense of like, there's got to be another way. What is the other way? Mm -hmm. Right. Would you say that is what gets us aligned to this is, you know, what aligns us with the light is the darkness? Yeah, I would say it often does because everything is a call to the universe. Every ounce of pain is a call to come back to alignment. It's just how much can you bear? You're not supposed to bear any, but of different thresholds. So everyone will get to their own rock bottom yeah. and it doesn't have to be bad, but at some point you just have that feeling of there's got to be a better way. I give up just whatever, help me. And that's yeah. when the universe can come in when you finally let go of your blocks and let it in, but it doesn't have to get to that. You can literally just start now by deciding to, but most people will just let it get to a really low painful level before they're, they give up enough mm. to like release that resistance and let the universe do its job. But yeah, if you start meditating now, you don't have to go to that dark place. It's not mm -hmm. necessary. Yeah. Release the resistance. Mm -hmm. Then you know what I feel enters in true faith, not blind faith, true faith, real faith, not like faith that the guy in the college shirt that you call father tells you about like a real faith. Yeah. That it's nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> it's sense. <laughs> it's not nonsense. Yeah. It's true sense. It's true wisdom. Yeah. Faith and wisdom, I that's, feel like, coincide. That's a hard one to explain, too, because that's another one that sounds like a cliche. Yeah. But you can't <laughs> tell someone what it feels like to suddenly know something. And mm. I didn't know what that felt like either. But there is a knowing. And when you know, you know, and you can't unknow when you you can't there's nothing anyone could say to convince me that I don't know what I now know Yeah, because it's perfect knowledge. And that's not something you can give or explain to someone else really. But when you feel it, mm. you know, like, Oh, that's what knowledge feels like. Okay. Yeah. I get yeah. it now. If you know, you know, 
If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. I think it's a good note to wrap this up at, to be honest with you. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm glad that you came on here and did this with me and um, for anyone in the future as well. Because the thing is, if we had, the, me personally speaking, if I had this, this knowing and I didn't have anybody else to tap in with, I might be like, am I going crazy? Is Yes. It's like, what? Why? Yes. What, what, does anyone else know? And when I come on here, and I tap in with like-minded people, beautiful souls like you that know and we can align our, our ideas a little bit, you know, find the kind, some kind of semblance, yeah. some kind of cohesion and uh, know together, I guess. <laughs> That's, yeah, it just it brings me joy. Lot. Yeah, it definitely helps. It definitely helps. It's a reaffirmation. It's like a, it's a testament. To myself mm -hmm. and hopefully others that are like, yeah, this is this is it, man. This, this is, is real. This is it. This is real. <laughs> yeah. It's realer than real. Yeah. So on that note, I thank you, seriously, for coming on here and sharing your time, effort, and wisdom with me and anyone that listens in the future. I wish you all the best. Seriously. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Gary. That was really enjoyable. I like that a lot. For sure. And keep doing your thing. And uh yeah. Peace and love. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>